All right, we are back. And finally, we are looking for walleyes. We are quite a ways north of Kenora in the bush, headed down roads I've never been before. We're down some little chicken trail right now in search of walleye. So we're looking for smaller walleye lakes. Um, never been here before. Heard a little rumor there's some walleyes in this lake. So that's the goal for today. And today we are going over the three most common mistakes ice fishermen make. And hopefully we don't make any of those. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Well, we made it to the lake. It was a bit of a windy trail, but we're here. We're gonna just walk down with the chisel, check the ice. I have no idea what to expect. We got a big dump of snow last night, which is not good for ice forming. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see looking for, you know, four inches, ideally. Take a core sample. Kind of broke off in chunks, so it's kind of tough to tell. It was thicker than that. I mean, that's three, four inches, I would say. All right, we made it out here checking the ice as we walked and uh, we didn't get as far as we wanted. It was, uh, there's some dark spots meaning that froze a little bit later. Uh, it could have just froze recently, but we checked a couple of darker spots closer and the ice was significantly thinner. So I was like, you know what? We're just gonna try a couple spots near the launch. Uh, like I said, never been to this lake before, but it seems like walleyes, early season, early ice season, give me these muddy bays or little points near the mouth of them. So that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna give you point number one of the biggest three mistakes that ice anglers make. But first, let's pop some holes. <laughs> Lots of ice. All right, we got some live minnows, courtesy of Sunset Baits. Tip number one, or you know, common mistake number one, and this, this is one I see all the time, is not taking advantage of your second line. And you know, for walleyes, it's easy to have a second line out. It could be, you know, an iFish Pro or a dead stick with a minnow, like what I'm gonna be doing today. But even if you're, let's say, crappie fishing, obviously a second rod might not make as much sense, but put a tip up for pike. You know, take advantage of that second line or third line or fourth line, depending on what's legal where you're at. I mean, if all of a sudden you're dealing with, I, I've heard some states you can use, you know, a dozen lines, that might be a little too much to maintain. You might not be able to fish properly, but two lines is not too much to maintain. And there are so many times where that second line has made the day for me. I've been crappie fishing, it's been pretty slow. Flag goes up, 40 inch pike, made the day, made the trip. It's a little more effort, you know, you gotta pack a tip up or a quick strike rig, but putting in a little bit of effort can just increase the odds. And right now we got the dead stick with the minnow on one. We got the little rattle bait, which, you know, may call them in on the other hand, but we're looking for our first walleye of the season. Depending on what you're fishing for, it might determine how often you should be moving. For walleyes, for crappies, you should probably be moving a little bit more. If you're fishing for, you know, if you're camped out for lake trout and you've been chumming an area, or if, um, you know, you're, parked on a creek mouth for pike. That might be the type of deal where you're just gonna have to wait it out all day. But generally, mobility is the key to success. You know, it's, it's you can wait around all day for them to show up or you can go find them. All right, we're moving. Can't sit around. You gotta move, gotta stay active. And uh, it just makes for a more interesting day as well. There are situations obviously where, like I said, pace to sit all day, but. Not for something like this, especially when you're on a new lake. Gotta keep moving. Well, this is our third move on our walleye lake. And so far, no signs of life. We, we didn't get to where we wanted to, as I mentioned, but hey, it's all good. Stick around here for another 15 minutes or so, and then we're gonna switch it up. That's the thing about here in Northwest Ontario, there are so many lakes to fish, all with Muskies, brook trout, smallmouth, largemouth, tiger muskies, lake trout, uh, everything really, except bowfin and red. Leave those for taro. All right, we gotta go, we gotta go. We didn't spend too long here. We tried three different spots in the lake, not happy with where we we're able to get. So we are gonna switch lakes, switch targets, and hopefully end with a bang. So 
so we were checking the ice on the way out and I'm told this lake has brook trout and we found a beaver lodge over there. You probably can't see it right now, but that's a pretty good spot for holding brookies. That's like beaver lodges is kind of a staple. So we're gonna chisel our way over there. Um, we're probably in seven, eight feet of water here, which is deep enough. We're not looking for super deep water. We're just looking for something quick, something accessible and something that may hold the fish. So we were gonna chisel our way over and we got like an hour and a half to hammer some big brookies for this lake has some big ones. So who knows? All right, right over there, that is a moose nest. A moose actually lays its eggs right on top of that. Uh, it takes about eight months to incubate, but uh, pretty neat to see that. The moose is probably hiding somewhere in the bush here. Brookies really like moose nests, and we're gonna chop some holes in front. We're hoping to upgrade from our micro fish. It's been a lot of small trout. We got some, we got some nice crappies. It's time for a big fish. All right, we are gonna be jigging the little red and gold. Dinabelle. There's a small fish looking at me. Very small. There's a fish coming in. Fish coming in. Got him. Oh, this is a better fish. We got a brookie on. Oh, look how beautiful it is. Oh, that is a stunner. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at those spots, the little blue halos with the red dots, the white on the fin. That is what we're talking about right there. Man, moving paid off. That is what did the damage right there. That little tungsten jig. Right there, guys, that's why you need your second rod. That fish didn't even look at my jigging spoon. He just came in for that minnow and inhaled it. So you kind of see on the right here, there's my minnow kicking. There's some other stuff there. I'm not sure what that other junk is, but there's my jig. There's a fish down there, there's a fish. What's going on? He's coming for the rattle bait. Oh, he's all over the rattle bait. He's gonna eat the rattle bait. Come on, come on. Oh, he's just, he's gonna eat it. Oh my goodness. The cool thing about live scope is you can actually tell the fish size because these grids are one foot. So if the fish spans, you know, one of those grids, it's 12 inches long. If it spans two, it's 24 inches long spans three, it's 36 inches long. If it spans four, it's 48 inches long. Fish. Oh, he's still down there. He's still down there. He's on the middle. Got him, got him. Oh my goodness, look at that fish. Holy smokes. Look at that fish, man. Like a painting. All right, she is going back. Wow. Oh, guys, I thought I missed my chance. Smoked the rattle bait. I was like, oh, no, I don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden, boom, the rod in the bucket. Once again, second line, got it done. We aren't done yet. This is time for my third and final tip. And this is fishing at prime time. We're half an hour from sunset. These three tips, these three common mistakes, I'm guilty of all of them. There's a lot of time where I'm only, a lot of times where I'm only fishing with one rod. There's a lot of times where I don't move as much as I should. Lastly, you gotta fish the prime time. As my buddy Clayton Chick always says, prime time. Oh, I love prime time. Prime time, sunrise, sunset, just like hunting. If you're not hitting those key times, you can miss some of the best fishing of the day, that's when their activity level peaks for so many types of fish. Don't pack it in. Sometimes you gotta fish till the dark. That is what can happen and we're gonna keep going. My active jigging rod right now is the new model from Frostbite. This is the Drench. This is a 39 medium light. This is the big brother to the Dipstick. The Dipstick 39 light. Probably my favorite rod in the Frostbite series and this is, you know, just a little bit of a bulkier version. Um, you know, a little bit better for dead stick and big wallies or a little bit bigger trout but uh, I was very excited when I heard about this rod. All right, here's what has caught both fish, and, and I should have probably caught that fish in the rattle lead, but little tungsten jig, that's what it looks like right there. Just pumped on those fish.
Everything's freezing, it's getting kind of cold. We are scoring. Is there a fish down there? What just happened? There's a fish down there. Got him. He ate it. Oh, another nice one. <laughs> look at the chrome and look at the brookie poop that just got on my hand. Look at that. Just stunning. Going back. Holy smokes. Prime time is upon us. We gotta capitalize. All right, guys, that is it. Uh, the camera might not really show how dark it actually is, but it is, it's dark, dark. We've we fished well past sunset. Yeah, we're packing it in. Amazing end to the day. Number one, most common mistake, not taking advantage of your second line. That second line caught all three of our brook trout. Number two is staying mobile. That can be moving around on the same lake or even switching lakes, switching lakes paid off. And number three is capitalizing on prime times at your sunrise and your sunset. Those are the three things I don't see people take advantage of. I'm guilty of all of those things, but today we took advantage of all three of those and we were successful. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. We're cranking out the ice videos and we will see you guys very soon. Audio sync, syncing audio. Check, check, check. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Syncing audio, syncing live scope. Check, check, one, two.